The mushroom growing supplies used in this video were provided by Chad from Microdelights Microgreens. He offers sterilized grain jars and substrate bags, inoculated grain jars, agar petri dishes, liquid cultures, and other accessories, as well as grow kits and seeds for microgreens. Oyster mushrooms are a member of the genus Pluritus, with the most commonly cultivated species being the Pluritus ostritus. They can be recognized by their short stalks, offset caps, and white spore prints. Oyster mushrooms grow naturally in temperate and tropical forests around the world on dead and decaying wooden logs. They are one of the most common types of cultivated mushrooms in the world and are probably one of the easiest kinds of mushrooms to grow. This makes them a good choice for anyone getting started with growing mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms are good for beginners because they give you a greater chance of success than other mushrooms. They are eaten in a variety of cuisines and are especially popular in Chinese, Japanese, and Korean cooking. The fruit bodies of this mushroom are distinctly shell or spatula shaped with different shades of white, cream, gray, yellow, pink, light brown, or other depending on the species. Oyster mushrooms have three distinct parts, a fleshy shell or spatula shaped cap, a shorter long lateral or central stalk, and long ridges and furrows underneath the cap called gills. The gills stretch from the edge of the cap down to the stalk and bear the spores. The spores are smooth, cylindrical, and germinate very easy on any kind of mycological medium within 48 to 96 hours. The mycelium of Pluritus is pure white in color. A crop of mushrooms can be harvested three times before the mycelium becomes exhausted. Here is the nutrient breakdown for 100 grams of oyster mushrooms. There are dozens of varieties of oyster mushrooms, so check to see which kinds are available and recommended for your climate. Most grow in an ideal temperature range of about 10 to 26 degrees Celsius or 50 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. A pure culture of your desired species of Pluritus is needed for inoculation on sterilized substrate. My video, How to Grow Mushrooms, Making Grain Spawn Jars, shows how to make grain spawn jars, which can be used to colonize growing bags or containers. It takes about 10 to 15 days for mycelial growth on cereal grains. The grain spawn jars can also be purchased to avoid the process of making them. Next, you must consider the growing medium. These could include straw, wheat, raji, millet, cotton, sawdust, dehulled corn cobs, peanut shells, dried grasses, sunflower stalks, tea leaf waste, and any other material composed of natural plant fibers. They can also be cultivated by using industrial wastes like paper mill sludges, coffee byproducts, tobacco waste, and apple pomace. The most common materials to grow oyster mushrooms on are usually freshly cut hardwood logs or shredded straw. In this video, straw is used as the growing medium. Straw is a cheap and effective material to use as a substrate. It can be purchased at farm stores or most places where you can find animal feed or bedding. Growing on straw requires you to sterilize the straw first to kill off resident microorganisms that will compete with your mycelium. There are several methods that you can use to prepare straw substrate, such as steam pasteurization, hot water treatment, fermentation or composting, and chemical sterilization. The method used in this video is pasteurization with hot water. Start by cutting the straw into one to three inch pieces. If you're working with large quantities of straw, it can be easier to use a weed whacker in a garbage bin to quickly shred the material. You can either grow in a substrate composed of 100% straw or add supplements to provide additional nutrients. Supplementing the substrate could help to achieve a higher yield by influencing the growth, harvesting period, number of fruiting bodies, flushes, and quality of the mushrooms. Pasteurizing the straw will minimize the likelihood of contamination once the straw has been inoculated. To pasteurize the straw, first stuff it all into a large pillowcase. Put the pillowcase into a large container and fill it with boiling water. On a small scale, this can be done indoors on a stovetop. For larger operations, a 55 gallon drum and butane burner can be used. 
place something heavy on the pillowcase to make sure it stays submerged in the water. You'll want to keep the water in the container about 71 degrees Celsius or 160 degrees Fahrenheit for one to two hours. Check the temperature of the water occasionally and when it falls below 160 degrees Fahrenheit, add more boiling water. After the pasteurization, allow excess water to drain from the pillowcase and let it cool completely before moving on to the next step. If the straw is too hot, it can kill the mycelium living in the spawn. When you squeeze a handful of the sauce substrate, only a few drops of water should come out. At this point, it's ready to inoculate with the mushroom spawn. The straw is inoculated by adding the colonized grain spawn to it. You can add the straw to the container or bag you want to grow the mushrooms in while layering in the grain spawn. You can also mix the straw in a container with the grain spawn until the two are evenly distributed. It's a good idea to wear clean gloves when doing this. If you are mixing in a container, make sure the container is clean. A quick wipe down with 70% isopropyl alcohol or 10% bleach solution will ensure it's contaminant free. The mushroom grain spawn to straw ratio should be about 15% grain spawn and 85% straw. Grain spawn that is 20 to 30 days old is best for spawning. Old spawn, three to six months, stored at room temperature at 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, forms a very thick mat-like structure due to mycelium aggregation and sometimes young pinheads and fruit bodies start developing in the spawn bottle itself. I'm using polytubing to make mushroom bags. With polytubing, you'll first need to tie one end shut before filling. I chose to layer the straw and grain spawn. As you go, pack the mix tightly with your hands to prevent air pockets. Do this until the log is of the desired length. Somewhere around two to four feet should be good. Once you've added enough, twist the top of the bag or tubing to help pack the material as tight as possible. You can tie the end off with a zip tie. Repeat this process for as many logs as you intend to make. After the tubes are complete, Use a sterilized razor to cut X's about five inches apart around the whole bag. This will allow the mycelium to breathe as it colonizes. When it's fully colonized and put into fruiting conditions, the oyster mushrooms will grow out of these holes. Also make some holes in the bottom of the plastic to allow excess moisture to drain. This is the time after inoculation and before the mycelium has fully colonized the substrate. Move the prepared bag containing the inoculated substrate to a suitable area for colonization. During this stage, the fungus has not yet consolidated its hold on the substrate and it is more susceptible to contamination. Spawned bags, trays, or boxes can be arranged in a dark room on raised platforms or shelves. It should be someplace that's out of direct sunlight, but still receives some indirect light and is at a normal room temperature. If you are using bags, you can hang them as this will allow excess moisture to drain freely. Mycelium can grow from 10 to 33 degrees Celsius, but the optimum temperature is between 22 to 26 degrees Celsius. The mycelium should colonize within one to four weeks depending on the size and temperature. Every few days, check the bag for contaminants. Look for abnormal wispy gray growths or discoloration, such as red or green spots. A bacterial contamination will cause the log to smell bad and create slimy looking wet spots. If you spot contamination, it's best to discard the bag without opening it to prevent spreading spores throughout the area.
When the mycelium has fully colonized the substrate, the fungus is ready for fruiting. Place the fully colonized bags or containers in a spot with plenty of fresh air and a little light. Spray this area twice a day with water, trying not to allow it to dry out. Mushrooms love damp, humid conditions and they won't grow if it's too dry. I made a simple fruiting chamber out of a small greenhouse. A humidifier was placed inside with a timer switch that was used to turn it on for a few minutes twice a day to maintain the humidity levels. The chamber would occasionally be opened a little bit to allow fresh air inside. After a week or so, you'll start to see tiny little mushrooms starting to grow. Over the following five to seven days, they will double in size every day. While various species require different temperature regimes, all require high humidity of about 80 to 90% during fruiting. The CO2 concentration during cropping should be less than 600 ppm or 0.6% and sufficient ventilation has to be provided during fruiting. Alternatively, when the log is fully colonized, you can cut it into discs about two to three inches thick and add them to an outdoor growing bed in a shaded spot. Mushrooms grown outdoors will grow larger, often give better yields, and can even look completely different. They require little maintenance, but the fruiting will depend on the weather conditions. Outdoor beds can produce fruit year after year whenever the right conditions are met, as long as they have a suitable food source or substrate. The main downside to growing mushrooms in an outdoor bed is exposure to the elements and pests. The right shape for picking can be judged by the shape and size of the fruit body. They should be harvested when the edge of the mushroom caps begin to flatten out and before the spores release. You can twist or cut the mushrooms off of the straw to harvest them. It is advisable to pick all of the mushrooms at one time so the next flush will appear at one time. Freshly harvested mushrooms can be stored in a paper bag in the fridge for one to two weeks without loss in quality. For long-term storage, dried mushrooms can be stored for about three to four months in sealed pouches without any change in taste. They can last six to 12 months as stored in an airtight container in a cool dark place. The dried mushrooms can be rehydrated in lukewarm water within 20 to 30 minutes. Mushrooms can last from 6 to 12 months when freezing them and 4 to 6 months when pickling them. Thank you for watching. Leave any comments, feedback, or suggestions in the comment section. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter to be updated on any new videos.